Fresh off a split in Providence, the Hartford Wolfpack coming back to Hartford for Game 3 and Game 4. Calder Cup playoffs taking on the Providence Bruins. Talking to the voice of the Hartford Wolfpack, play-by-play man Alex Thomas joining us once again. We talked to you just before the Wednesday affair. Didn't know how that was going to go, and we get a big win, 4-3. And then Friday, oh, Providence came back big time, 6-0. <laughs> Tell us about these two games. All you got to do is get a split, and you're kind of playing with house money going forward. But talk about how it all finished out. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's got to be the final tally, right? I mean, you got the split in Providence. That's a win. That's a tough building to play in. There's a reason that that team got a buy through the first round of the Calder Cup playoffs. They're, they've been one of the best teams in the league really since the Christmas holiday. So, to get a split there was, was a win. Obviously, game two did not go the way that anybody would have hoped for. Um, but, you know, the way that the team kind of looks at it and the way that I look at it is whether it's 6 nothing or 2-1, to one, doesn't really matter. I mean, you lost game two. The series is 1-1. You get a couple of days to reset and come back home. And honestly, I, I firmly expected a real big push from Providence in game two. Last year, the Wolfpack went out there and, and pretty much dominated the first two games of that series, took a, a 2 nothing stranglehold. And Providence really was never in it from that point on. So there's a lot of guys that are back from last year. Their head coach, Ryan Mushinell, is back from last year. They had talked a lot about revenge before the series. And after losing game one, I, I think it was the most predictable thing that they were going to come out swinging and, and jumping out to a 3 nothing lead really made the rest of that game difficult for the Wolfpack. But I thought Hartford played their best period in the third period, and I think they set a physical tone as well for game three on Wednesday night. And uh, really, at that point of the game, that's all you could have asked for. You got the split. Now it's the best of three, and you have home ice. Alex, who is uh, a guy or guys right now that are playing particularly well for the Wolfpack? I thought Tyler Pitlick was by far the best player on the ice on, on Wednesday night in Game 1. He had uh, a goal and two assists for three points, and his line with Jake LeCision and Anton Bleed had their fingerprints all over that game. Uh, they play a, a real physical style of hockey that I think adapts really well to the playoffs, and Providence had a tough time adjusting to that in game one. I thought that line kind of did whatever they wanted in that game. Um, Pitlick scored a huge goal at the end of the second period to give Hartford a 3-2 lead going into the intermission. Bleed scored the game winner early in the third. Uh, LeCision has routinely been Hartford's best face-off guy, and he scored in the first shot of the hockey game. Um, so I think that line's been Hartford's best. I would say that trio as a whole um, really, to me, has been their best line through two games, even with game two where – you know, look, things, again, didn't go hard for its way, but uh, I thought that line had their best stretch in the two games in Providence, and, and I think they're going to be the X factor as the series shifts back to Hartford. Teach our fans about the Providence goalie, Brandon. Is it Bussy or Busey? This guy was uh, – put- uh, Yeah. Is it Bussy or Busey? Bussy. Bussy. Bussy, isn't he – like he's kind of – unorthodox too he catches with the right hand which is a little bit difficult to look at if you're not familiar with that or I guess it's kind of unique in the world of hockey for a goalie to have the glove on the right side but this guy pitched a shutout on Friday night um, kind of a, a New York guy that went to Western Michigan to play college hockey now trying to find his way in the AHL slash yeah. NHL but tell us more about this guy what we got to do to get past him well, he, he's just, he's a great goaltender, right? And that's one of the biggest things with this Providence team is they've got two great goaltenders in Brandon Busty and Michael DiPietro. Um, and both had a lot of success in the regular season, no, no matter the night. So, uh, for me, it's, it's, it's testing Busty early. I mean, that's one of the things that Hartford, I thought, did well in game one is they really peppered the Providence in early and they struck twice, I, I believe, in the first five shots of the hockey game for them. So, that kind of set the tone, but you also need traffic. If Bussy sees the puck clearly, he's going to make the save. He's, to me, this is a goaltender that uh, you know I would expect to see at the next level next year. I mean, he's that good of a goaltender. He's impressed that much in the two years that we've got to see him down here in the American League. And for me, if, if you let him see the puck cleanly, let him see it clearly, he's going to make the save. you got to get more traffic in front of him. I think Hartford did a great job of that in game one. You know, I look at Pitlick's goal. Late in the second period, a redirection out in front. I look at Blake Hillman's goal where there was some traffic in front of Busty and, and Hillman was set up nicely by Brett Berard in the slot. And even the Anton Bleed goal where he was providing a screen, Busty made the save. The rebound came right to Bleed, and he just waited him out and tucked home the game winner. So if you get that traffic on him, you can beat him, and I suspect that's going to be part of Hartford's plan for Game 3. You mentioned Brett Berard. Um, it's hard to know when looking at the, the roster on a day-to-day basis, who's going up, who's coming down. You look at the stats from the course of the season, but, but uh, Brett Berard is obviously a local guy, played at Providence College. Bobby Trevino 
um, at UMass. It, it, are, is he at, is Bobby Trevino play? What, what are the local tie-ins for this Wolfpack team? Just to remind folks that are looking to come out and have an extra rooting interest in this group. Well, yeah, I mean, you mentioned Brett Burrard, and I think his story is probably the most interesting in this series. I mean, he yeah. played his college hockey for Providence College. He's from Providence. Um, that's his hometown. That's his hometown team. Um, and he's getting a chance to go up against them. And having talked to him almost every time we've been in Providence this year, there, there's a little extra juice for him. And um, there's actually a, a head-to-head of four Providence College Friars in this series. There's Burrard and and you got to stop Hemelash on the Hartford side going up against Michael Callahan and Riley Durant for the Bruins. So mm. um, that's a pretty cool tie in there. Berard being a local kid to Rhode Island. Um, you mentioned Bobby Trevino. He won a national championship not too far from here at UMass. So um, I would say those are probably your biggest tie ins in this series to, to the local aspect of things. And, you know, there's a couple of former Wolfpack players uh, on the Bruins as well. That's led by Jason Magna, who uh, had a terrific season in his first year with Providence. Talking to Alex Thomas, the voice of the Hartford Wolfpack. Game three Wednesday, game four Friday in the XL Center. Seven o'clock, the puck will drop. Game three Wednesday. Kurt, I'm going to remind you of this. $2 beers down there at uh, XL Center on Wednesday. That's an awesome little touch that the Wolfpack added in for some extra hype from their fan base. I love the way you do that, Alex. Uh, but Adam alluded to it. Bruins and Rangers still in the playoffs. Is this over, or is there a chance where our roster could be moving around, or same with Providence, their roster could be moving around, or is this set in stone, what we have is what we have? I don't think in the AHL you can ever say it's set in stone, right? <laughs> I mean, there's there always the potential for change, but, you know, Providence has seen some change since game two. Patrick Brown was recalled by Boston yesterday and, and travel with the team to Florida ahead of game one tonight against the Panthers, and uh, I thought he was the best player in game two for, for really for both sides. I thought he was terrific in that game. So, um, you know, there's a chance that the Bruins are without him for, for game three. Michael DiPietro, who backed up in game two, is, is the third goalie with Boston down in Florida. So um, there's a you know, chance that he's not here for either of the two games, and it'll be Kyle Kaiser backing up Brandon Bussey. So uh, the Bruins have seen some change. I, you know, I, I don't know if we're going to see any change here. Um, obviously, towards the end of the season, we saw Louis Deming and Adam Edstrom go up to New York, and um, Louis's been serving as the third goalie behind Igor Shesterkin and Jonathan Quick, and Edstrom's been up there with uh, as one of their extra forwards. So um, y- you never know. But you know, as of as of right now, the Wolfpack have their same roster since Game Two, and, and I guess we'll see what happens here in the next forty-eight hours. My life in minor league baseball never had, uh, when our season ended, it was September call-up time, uh, even if you took a deep right. playoff run. So the overlapping schedule with playoffs happening during playoffs is a little unique. So um, what is it like in the, the locker room with guys having the big club to also keep tabs on? What's the energy like just with those guys excited for the big club? Yeah, I mean, guys are, are super excited. I mean, right, you see the Rangers, this is a pretty big series for them against Carolina, and they won game one on Sunday, so... Uh, there's an excitement for, for the guys that are up there and getting the opportunity. And, um, you know, there's a lot of excitement here as well. I mean, playoff hockey to me is, is the best thing in sports. And these, you know, these guys have won a series in back-to-back years. And, um, you know, even when you see, you know, the overlapping, you're right, is unique. But, you know, there's opportunity there. I mean, we saw last year the Rangers recalled four players from Hartford. And Dylan Garand got the go in net last postseason. And he was spectacular. And, and he's been great again this playoff. And, um you know, last year you saw guys like Adam Edstrom and Adam Sakura and Bobby Trevino get real opportunity in the postseason. And this spring you've seen guys like Yaroslav Hemelash and Victor Mancini, uh, guys like that get opportunity here in the playoffs and playing pretty big roles and taking steps in their career. So uh, there's an excitement for the opportunity as well that is given when guys get called up and young players get a chance to step in. And for the second straight spring, we've, you know, we've seen guys take the opportunity and run with it. Really great problem to have when you got great players and teams that are still playing in the playoffs, just like our Wolfpack. Ow, ow, ow. Wednesday, 7 o'clock is game three. Friday, 7 o'clock is game four. Alex Thomas, as always, thanks for the time. Well, before you go, I just want to know, when do you start calling P.J. Stock? When do you start calling, like, the 2000 Calder Cup champs to come back? Is it too early for that? <laughs> Well, you know what? In the third period of game two, uh, that would have been a situation in which P.J. Stock would have thrived. And it, <laughs> it got very physical in that third period. And uh, there were some heated players on both sides. And I wonder if that will carry over to game three. And, 
I, listen, PJ was here earlier this year, so I, I don't think it's too early. I think we've, we've kind of opened that that uh, that bottle already, and, and we'll see what kind of happens here the rest of the way. But I know those guys still uh, still keep an eye on things, and I know they're still rooting for the team. So, um, you know, we'll see. And I'm sure he's still got a pretty heavy right hand. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt that. Yeah. <laughs> Alex, thanks for the time, my man. Good luck on Wednesday and Friday. Can't wait to be talking next round with you. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.